recorded this computer and we there's that creepy voice we are recording perfect oh okay everybody happy thursday to you all i'm gonna do one last thing here get my lecture chat and lecture questions set up let me see my participants where are my friends at where they are okay so um without further ado let's hop into it i think that's it all right let's just watch this slinky for a bit isn't that cool i found a cool little kind of loop a little gippy it's like a little this is like a childhood dream just like to have the slinky always going down i never got a slinky to fully fall off each stair all the way down it's still on my bucket list as a 20 something year old so uh that's how my life is going but anywho let's talk about loops Let's get into it. I'm your host, Kyle, and we are going to start with announcements here, as always, and just shake your head up and down if you guys can hear me to make sure I'm not boring everyone to death already or just, all right, awesome, announcements, here we go. First thing, part two will be due on June 3rd. June 3rd, you should have part one turned in. If you do not, reach out to your TFs, reach out to, reach out to fellow colleagues, schedule time with me, anything you have to do to get that part one in there so you don't start falling behind on the first part. Make sure you make sure or make sure you master those concepts and everything like that. I'm realizing now I don't have my light on, so you're just gonna see a dark face today. Um, whatever. All right. Um, okay, so that's that. That's part one. Um second thing is no class on Monday. Happy Memorial Weekend, everybody. Yes, long weekend. Take it, enjoy it, but don't forget those concepts. And if anything, if you're super bored, well around barbecuing or something like that because you're totally going to be bored this weekend study those concepts make sure you're there and getting ready for part two or even part three or maybe whatever section you want to study or restudy anything but that is what we have monday take that time to catch up or just relax finally we have our studio review tonight at 8 p.m um so just feel free to join back in i'll put that announcement out there it's going to be the same exact zoom we've done this for the past few times just letting you know, I'll know. I'm going to go to the end again on that studio. Hopefully nothing happens this time. I can actually complete it. Thank you for everyone last time who stuck into the end. That was fun. It was quite a hefty studio. I haven't looked at the studio yet. I hope it's not as hefty, but we'll find out. Some announcements I have not put on here. Um, so I have, after the past few classes, unfortunately, this cohort's a little structured a little bit differently. Everyone structures our cohorts just a teensy weensy bit differently. I have been traditionally teaching till seven. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not giving enough time in those groups, as you probably have already seen. So I actually have to, I'm going to start teaching only to 6.30. So we're going to have to get through this material at a, at, a, at a quickened pace. Not a quicker pace, but a quickened pace. That being said, I'm going to be keeping our mute button off. So I'm going to be disabling it until I absolutely need someone to unmute. So in that case, please reach out in the lecture questions channel with questions. Make sure we keep them to questions. I'll be looking at that and so will the TFs. Additionally, for any other chat, use the lecture chat. If I do see some chat in there in the actual questions thing, I'm gonna politely ask to please move it over to the lectures chat so we don't pile it up. Plus I see it right here in my top left and I just see like people always like talking and stuff. I'm gonna get wound up because I wanna throw in some emojis and gifts there into that conversation. I can't do that because I'm teaching. So please make sure they're using lectures chat for what it's used for and as well as lecture questions. I will be making sure that we are unmuted, so don't worry. You guys get to talk to me. You get to yell at me. You get to say whatever names you want to me. It's all good. So that's what I'm going to be doing here in a little bit. Other than that, that is all I have. You guys are ready for loops? Ready for the big one? It's studio time at 8 p.m. mandatory to join. I'm not going to say it's mandatory. It's extremely recommended that you do, just so we can go over the studio. But if you have, uh, if you want to stay in your groups, feel free. I'm not going to pressure you to come. Uh, because it is recorded, but completely up to you. I don't see a lecture chat thread. John, what you're going to do is that you need to join the channel. Uh, next to channel, you'll see a plus. Go ahead and join the lecture dash chat channel. That's what you ought to do. Oh my God. All right. And where can we find the recordings? As always, that will be on the YouTube channel. Go ahead and look in the pinned in our general chat. And you will, or um, excuse me, the announcements, you'll see my link for the YouTube channel. If you can't find it, feel free to direct message me and I will send you the channel to the YouTube link. All wait, right. Wait, were you talking to me? Yes, John. Uh, oh. What I saw in there, you need to join that hashtag lecture chat channel. So go ahead and click on what Tyler sent you 
and that should bring you over to that specific channel. All right, everybody. So what I'm going to do here is if there's no more questions, again, feel free to type those out. I'm not seeing anything. All right. Well, this is going to be awkward because I said where well, I'm going to mute everybody, but I can't just start off lecture muting everybody. That's just me. So what we're going to do is dive into some starters here. And I am going to want a little bit of feedback. So once I hear one person speak up, feel free to be the person who answers that. So I would love to hear someone tell me how to talk me through how to create a variable called fave sandwich with a value of turkey sandwich. Who's going to help me out with this one? Let. Let. Very. Oh, actually. Oh, okay. Let or con. This one was a gray zone. I don't know which way to go here. I'll take a let too, because you could change your favorite sandwich anytime. So I'll take that. Let or con. Fave sandwich. And what do we do now? Equals turkey sandwich. Turkey sandwich. With those quotes. Don't forget about those quotes, but we already knew that. Those quotes are going to dictate a string. We need to make sure we put those in there. How about a deliciousness rating for being a value of five? Let's do Const deliciousness rating. Deliciousness, what? deliciousness never changes. What? Say let. I'm going to say let. Again, these are all gray zones. This is just what I said. Let's just go with let. These aren't really hard ones. The names, wow. names like dog names, uh, credit card numbers, social securities, those are cons. So this is more of a, like a let. And then equal to five. Fantastic. Now this is the fun one. How about if we created a variable containing the ingredients for our sandwich, bread, lettuce, tomato, and turkey? Uh, we do wet equal lettuce. brackets. In the ring. So this one I like to do const. I don't yeah, want to change my idea. ingredients array. So I'm going to say const here, called ingredients. And what do I start with? Bracket. Square bracket. Square bracket. Square bracket. Very good, everybody. Square bracket. And then we're going to add those values in there. And how do we separate these values? Uh, commas outside comma. of the parentheses. Comma. comma. We're going to separate them with a comma outside of the quotes. Comma, 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 then we're going to end it with a square bracket with that semicolon on the end because that's what we do. Awesome. All right. So let's keep moving on. We're going to bring all of the. We're going to bring over all that stuff that we just created over to our next slide. And I want you to let me know how do we get the value or the character K out of turkey sandwich. Fave sandwich. Uh, parentheses. Like we won't use parentheses. Dot. Not parentheses. Sorry. Like parentheses. Uh, bracket. Square bracket. Uh, square bracket. Square bracket. Three. 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 Very three. good. It is going to be three with the ending there. And it's three again because turkey, T, T is zero. U is one. Yeah. R is two. And K is three. That's how we get K for Kyle there out of turkey. Fantastic. All right. First. Continuing, how would I get bread out of ingredients? Ingredients, square bracket. Zero. Square bracket. Zero. Zero. Square bracket. Zero. Zero. Okay, okay, fantastic. Let's just like, let's spice things up a bit here. And yes, I am going to be doing dad food puns for the rest of the like lecture, in case anyone's <laughs> wondering. Anyway, would this work? No. 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 Why not? Unmutable. Unmutable. Very good. Strings are immutable. We cannot change strings like this. This is a no-no. It's not going to do anything. JavaScript won't give you an error, but it's not going to do anything. So we can't do this. But how about this? Yes. Yes. Very good. We absolutely can. We can change these arrays just like this. So this is how we can actually reassign things, such as our ingredients. Instead of bread, we're going to use pancakes for our turkey sandwich. So that's what we're doing here. So awesome. One thing I do want to go through is I want to talk about something that happened during, I want to talk about something that happened during studio real quick. And that is someone brought up that they asked me, why did I use const here? But I was still able to reassign our bread to pancakes. And I want to dive a little bit into that with everyone. Let's talk about const. Const favorite sandwich equals turkey sandwich. I don't want to change my turkey sandwich. So therefore, if I did this, what's going to happen? The world explodes. We're going to get a big error. We can't reassign const values. So then why was I able in ingredients to change ingredients over to pancakes just like this? I should have gotten that error from what I've been able to tell you. So are you probably asking yourself, is Kyle just a big fat liar? It's like that, don't call me fat and maybe but let's explore it before we start throwing out names here. We're going to explore why exactly we can do this. 
So what's exactly happening behind the scenes? Let's take a look at ingredients. Remember, it's wrapped in a thing called an array. An array is a container or a lot like a box. Inside of this box is where we contain our values. So what's going on here is that we can't reassign the box, but we can reassign the contents. We can take bread and reassign pancakes. That's a-okay with a const. The problem comes is if we try to reassign it to another box with maybe different contents inside of it. The second we try to reassign another box to a const array, that's when we get the error. So that was what's happening in the studio, is that we weren't reassigning the array, we were just changing the array around, but it's still the same box. So that's exactly why we could do that in that studio. And hopefully we're friends again. All right, let's keep going. Do, 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 do. Making sure, all right. Remember, throw those questions in the lecture questions channel if anyone's got one. All right, so we have these things and I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys yell at me once again and tell me, how would we add onion to our ingredients here? Because who doesn't like some onion on their turkey sandwich? Push. What do we start Push. with? Push. We start with a word. Ingredients. If you just say push to your computer, it's gonna have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Ingredients.push. Ingredients. Ingredients. Very push. good. Ingredients.push with that onion in there. Fantastic. Now we got some delicious onion on there. Hit it onions in, kid. Now I love it. Don't know if it's wrong, but I mean, whatever. I like onion though. Red onion though, not the white onion. Eh. Preferences. What if we wanted to print out all the ingredients on one line? What do we use? Console. 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 Very good. Console. We can absolutely do it this way. Now, the one thing I want to talk about next is what if we wanted to print all of our ingredients out on separate lines? Interesting. Well, let's explore that. Here's our ingredients. And we want our output to look something like this. We want each line to have something on top of it. Now, what you are probably thinking is that, okay, maybe I can just console log each individual um, portion or something like that. We can definitely explore that, but we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this question. Let's take a look at the indexes. Bread is zero, lettuce is one, tomato is two, turkey is three. Now, I'm no detective, but there's something fishy going on there. It seems like we're actually counting there. We're starting at zero and counting up. Zero, one, two, three. We can all count. Fingers crossed we can. And that is what we're doing here. We're counting up each index and then putting that one out there. So to begin actually approaching this problem, let's just take a step back and create an algorithm that counts to three. So. I'll bring them in here just in case anyone forgot our numbers from zero to three. Here are our indexes. And what I wanna ask is what number are we going to start with? Zero. Very good, zero. We're gonna start with zero because we're counting from zero to three. So we're gonna start with zero. And now for our benefit here, I'm going to assign it to a variable, let i equal zero. Why did I say i? Because I abbreviated index to i. It's gonna make it a little bit simpler. I like little number or little letters there. Let's just do I. Let I equal zero. The next thing is we can console log that now. We just console log I, which is zero. So it's gonna print out zero. My question is once we console log that, what or how do we get to the next number? I is equal to I plus one. Very good. We add one to I. That's how we get to the next number. Zero to one, zero plus one. Easy. Promise this is not a trick. You're like, Kyle, where is the twist here? I know it's coming. I promise it's not. It's literally, we're just counting numbers here. So I is going to be one here. We're going to reassign I to one. So let's keep going. Now we're going to console log that and it's going to be one. So we're going to keep going here. We're going to add another one and it's going to be two. We're going to console log that. We're going to do that again, I plus, uh, what is that? One plus two is three now. So it's going to be three, and then we console log three. So congratulations. We just created an algorithm that counted to three. Now, of course, we're going to go over here and just make sure. We're going to say let i equals to zero. We're going to say console log i. 
just to make sure that we are not lying to ourselves. I plus one, and I put a period in there. And what I'm gonna do here is do my lazy programmer approach, and we're gonna just paste three and perfect. I'm gonna run that, uh-oh, one back. What am I doing here? Why am I, why am I being crazy? There we go, that's pretty good. When we run that, there we go. And now we have zero, one, two, three, exactly what we had on the other screen. It's like, all right, perfect, we can count. But the problem comes is that what happens if I ask you to count to 5,000? If anybody wants to guess the amount of code we have to write, it's 5,000 times two, basically, plus one. So that's about 10,000 lines of code that we're gonna have to write to do some counting. Do we wanna do that? I'm gonna yeah, take that yeah, as a rhetorical no, exactly, we don't want to. So wouldn't life be a lot easier if we can just repeat this section right here and maybe forget about it instead of writing 10,000 lines of code? I thought so. See, this is actually a sales pitch. I'm selling you on a better way to count. You're welcome. So let's take a look at it. How can we loop over this small algorithm we just created? Well, as you might have guessed, we're gonna be diving into a certain loop. And then this one specifically that loves to count is called the for loop. To build the for loop, to start to build the for loop, we start with the word for, go figure. And then of course our parentheses. So four is a keyword, we do parentheses, and now this is where it gets fun. What we just defined up at the top, we're gonna to use at the bottom. We're gonna start with our let i equal zero. That's what we're gonna begin with. Then the for loop is gonna ask for two more things to know about. To separate those things it needs to know about, which we'll discover here in a little bit, we separate them with the semicolon. So we have let i equal zero semicolon. Just dig into that while I drink a coffee. Fantastic. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell it how long to loop for. So we say i less than four. We need to keep i less than four. We're starting at zero, less than four. Sounds like we're gonna go zero, one, two, three. It is not necessary, Kiki. Uh, it is uh, just how everything's written. You can write that it all in one, completely fine. All right, and then, uh, like I said, as I promised, we need one more thing in our for loop that I asked for. So we separate it again with a semicolon, and then we say i plus one. This is how we tell it what to do every time we iterate. And then we close that parentheses, and we add some code. That code we're gonna enter? Well, we've already used it. We're gonna have that console log there. So that's how we approach this for loop. Now, I just threw this in your face. So of course, we need to dive a little bit deeper into this delicious dish. See, told you a pun. That wasn't even a pun, that was just direct. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it just a bit. So this is the for loop. For loop, meet the class, the class, meet the for loop. For loops are our friends. Sometimes it can be a very difficult relationship, but I'm hopefully making it a good transition or easiness transition for you all to meet, whatever. Anywho, let's go over what we just saw. We started with this section here, i equals zero. Tyler, that's a great question. Give me one second, we'll definitely talk about that. The for loop here, let i equal zero. This is telling the for loop where to begin, what number to start on. i equals zero. I want you to start at zero for me, for, for loop. The next one, i less than four. This is a conditional. You know it's a conditional because it uses a less than sign. It's saying for loop, keep going as long as this condition is true, AKA I is less than four, meaning that it will count up until three. Because if it, you add three plus one as four, four is not less than four. So the for loop's like, okay, I don't wanna do this anymore. So it's gonna count up until then. Tyler, your question was, can you do I less than or equal to three? You absolutely can. So most of the time, this is how for loops are written, and this is how you're gonna see it typically. We'll see why exactly we're gonna do it this way, but you absolutely can do that. Finally, oh, sorry, that was when to end. And then finally, what to do between each loop, i equals i plus one. We wanted to iterate and add one to i each time. We want it to count. For loops love counting. That's what they're here for. Here. 
let's go take a look at that. So this right here is the for loop. Let's go ahead and hop over to our code and we're gonna transform what we just had up here into that for loop. As always, like we said, to start the for loop, we say for, then let i equal zero, i less than four, and then i equals i plus one. Again, those spaces aren't necessary. I'm just putting them there just to help us out. Remember, we separate with those semicolons. And now we're gonna say console log, and we're gonna say i. Moment of truth, can we count? Everyone's fingers crossed. Let's see if we can do it. We just counted. We just counted to three. This is the best thing I've seen all day. Let's try one more thing. I said, can we count to 5,000? Let's count to 5,000. Run it. It's counting to 5,000. Look at that. And just like that, the computer counts for us. What an amazing day and what an amazing tool. All right. So congratulations. We know what to count. But you also asked real quick if this is possible. Let me just show you that it absolutely is. I do not recommend it. I recommend the way that I'm presenting. But just to show you for your own curiosity, it absolutely does still work. All right. Everybody still with me? Everybody still happy with loops? Good? All right. That's what I like to hear. All righty. So let's keep exploring. I want to really talk about a little bit more in depth about this for loop, about what's actually going on inside of, inside of its mind, inside of its guts. So here we have our brackets. You've seen these brackets before. You've kind of seen this notation before also in your if statement. What happens in these brackets stays in these brackets. It's Vegas style. So whatever code you put in here is going to be looping over it. But looping is not exactly how we've been talking before. Let's talk about real quick algorithms. From day one, from slide four, I have been telling you, algorithms go sequentially. Algorithms move sequentially. And loops still do the exact same thing. It just so happens it can also skip back up to a line and do it again, hence looping. So always still think sequentially when it comes to loops. Now let's ex exactly explore that. Oh, crap. What did I just do? Okay, don't know what the heck I just did there. Anyway, uh, shake your head up and down if you guys can still see my screen. All right, I don't know what I just, I don't know how I did that. Okay, I just discovered something, like a brand new technology and blacks out my screen. Anyway, let's talk about what's happening on this loop. We're gonna start at the top. This is where a computer comes to. It's gonna say, look, for loop, that's cool. It's gonna say, all right, my i is zero and my console log is, excuse me, my, or, uh, sorry, my i is equal to zero. Zero is less than four, which is true. And it's gonna move in. It's gonna say, okay, my i is zero, perfect. And it's gonna print out my output now to zero. Then what it's gonna do programmatically, sorry, people are calling me right now. They're not as important as you guys. What it's gonna do is print out zero and then move on to this closing bracket here. It's gonna say, okay, it's the end of my closing bracket. Let me go back up to the top and take a look and see if I need to keep looping. So it moves back up to the top. Now it's gonna say, okay, I see i plus one. You want me to add one to my i. So it's like, okay, that's cool. Now my i equals one. So it's gonna move back down here to console log. It's like, hey, I want you to console log i. And the for loop's gonna be like, or the computer's gonna be like, i is now one. So it prints out one. It goes back down to here. It's like, okay, I'm done with all my code. Let's go back up and see if I need a loop again. It's gonna say, all right, I'm at, two now because i just added that can i still loop and it's gonna be like yeah go ahead and keep looping so it console logs that and it keeps moving on it goes back up here it's like okay is three less than four sure is let's keep looping turns out three goes back up here and it adds again one to i it's gonna say is four less than four it's like oh crud it's not i can't keep looping so it skips out it gets out of there and it keeps moving on sequentially this is how our for loop and loops in general work in our programming language. And it's how the computer looks at it. So here I'm gonna pause and feel free to ask me any questions about what we just covered here because I just wanna make sure that no one's fuzzy about anything. Feel free to post it in that lecture questions channel. Give everybody a second. See some people type in. Gosh, loops are just so much fun. 
How come you use i equals i plus one and not i plus plus? Ashton, that is a great question. In fact, that I am just putting that there because we haven't seen i plus plus in these lectures. So I like the enthusiasm. We'll see that here shortly. Can you get your output on all the same line instead of, uh, instead of vertically? Technically, you could. We can take a look at how to do that. Um, we could build a string as it's going through. Let's quickly look at what we can do there because that is going to bleed us into a big concept. So we're going to say let our number line equal blank string. What I'm going to do here is now I'm going to say blank are our number line plus equals i. And then I'm going to console log our number line. Here is how we can build it to be all next to each other. Isn't that pretty? There we go. Now, this is something I'm not going to answer too many questions on because we'll dive a little bit deeper into what exactly is going on here. But this is a way you can do it. And I like that question because it will at least give you an introduction to some concepts and some techniques that we're going to be doing here in a little bit. So that being the case, let's go back here. Awesome questions, everybody. And let's keep talking about stuff. All right, let us print out some ingredients. Let's bring those ingredients back in here. So what we're going to do here is that we need to be able to, again, print these out line by line. For our own benefit, I put our indexes above each of our ingredients in our array. So as always, and I'm going to let us talk because it's been too long to not talk to you guys. What number are we going to start on? Zero. 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 Very good. Zero. Answer too quickly. I was going to run and get my clock. All right. And then we're going to, of course, assign it again. And then when do we end? Three. 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 But that was kind of not a trick question because I would never trick you guys. Yeah, but it? three is true. Yeah. But what if I keep wanting to push things into my array where three is always changing? Maybe I push a bunch of onions in there and now I'm up to three. 10. Blank. So instead of zero, we're going to bring in a trick that array can do, a property, specifically the ingredients.length property. Oh. Because if our array keeps changing, we don't know exactly if it's always going to be three, which is not always going to be three. Solid hint. So we need to do something that's actually reading the property of the array and passing that in there. And then finally, what do we do between each loop? Comma, right? Semicolon. Or is it? That's how we separate our things that the One, more loop needs. Seven. But what do we do between each iteration of the loop? One. You want to go to the next index, so you add one. Add we one. count. We add one. Oh. Very good. So that's what we do between each loop. Now, we've already talked about this a little bit. i equals i plus 1. We've seen this addition before, but we have not exactly seen um, one other notation that we've seen probably in the lectures questions channel now. Instead of i equals i plus 1, we can shorthand this to save us a little bit of room. And that was with the i plus plus. The two things you just saw are exactly equivalent. So i plus plus there is just kind of shorthand i equals i plus 1. So now that we have our three pieces in there, we're going to write our for loop with what we just did. What word? Just mouth it to me. What word are we going to start with to create our loop? Not less. We need the for. We're going to start building our for loop. So for loop starts with four. Then we're going to be using those pieces we just asked ourselves at the top to build that. Where do we begin? Let i equal zero. We separate it with that semicolon. Then the next thing, where do we end? Our ingredients.length. So what we write is i less than ingredients.length. As we saw in the previous one, it was i less than four or i less than three. This one's going to be i less than ingredients.length. Because again, our array can change at any time. You keep throwing onions in there, it's going to be a bigger. So there you go. Then finally, what do we do between each loop? We iterate, we count. So we say i plus one there. And then we finish up our for loop and we throw in our code. Awesome. So now we are actually counting all of our stuff. So let's go ahead and bring in ingredients over here. So we say const ingredients equals our array. We're going to say bread. It is and lettuce. Let us type faster tomato and turkey. 
Fun fact, over in Europe or a lot of Asia, turkey sandwiches are unknown because they don't have turkey. Found that out the hard way. All right. Anyway, so we have, oh, sorry, we have that. So now what I'm going to change this out for is that instead of this, I want to do ingredients.link. There we go. We're using that property, that property to do this. I'm going to go revert back to what we had before. I'm going to console log I out and see if we're still working. Remember, we take these baby steps to make sure that we didn't break anything along the way. It also gives us a great opportunity to give you guys some examples. So we're still counting. Zero, one, two, three. Air high five. Awesome. We're still in it. <laughs> I love everyone just like kind of putting their hand up like, you know you want to just do it. Air high five. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's keep going. So we have our thing still working, but we still don't have all of our stuff for now line by line. So Kyle, can we just get to the point here? Let's get bread out of our ingredients. Remind me again how we exactly get bread out of our ingredients. What do we start with? Tell me. Ingredients. Very good. Ingredients. And then what's next? Square back. I saw it. Zero. Very good. And then bread is what number? Zero. 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 Very good. Awesome. How about lettuce? Talk me through that one. Ingredients. Ingredients. Square Square brackets. One. 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 Three. Very good. Tomato. One. Ingredients, Ingredients square, bracket, square bracket, two, 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 and then I'll do the last one for us. Turkey, three, and look at some fishies going on here, and it's not really a fish sandwich. So we're gonna look at it, and it looks like we're counting again to do this. So how can we take the power of counting instead of writing four lines of code, to turn into one line of code? Let's take a look at that. If we're over here, we bring back that for loop that we just talked about. We said that we can get out bread, lettuce, tomato, turkey by putting the number in there. But what variable in our for loop has the number that's constantly counting? Why? Looking at, what I, is it? Why? Very good, I, our index. So we take ingredients here. We say, I don't wanna get zero out. I don't wanna say I wanna get one out. I say, I wanna do the variable that's actually housing my number that's being counted through each iteration. Remember, remember that arrow. It moves sequentially one after the other. No magic behind it. That's what the for loop's doing. And so every time a loop's through, it's going to go zero, one, two, three. So that's what we have here. That I is very important. It's our index that's actually truly counting. Finally, we're just going to wrap this in a console log so we can actually see what we did. So let's go back over. Let's go ahead and console log now ingredients I. Run that. We just put the ingredients of a turkey sandwich on our screen. We're going to change the world. All right. So you might be asking yourself, oh, and let's actually change this too. I promised I'd change it to this. Yeah. So remember, you can do I++. That will still iterate through that. So there you go. It still does the same thing. They're very much equivalent. One thing you might be asking yourself is, okay, what if I say I plus two? Like, what's going on there? Let's just see that. Well, we're only going to get two back because it's going to skip one and three. So we're only get back zero, because we start at zero, you add two to zero, it's gonna be what? Two. So we're only getting back the second index and then it stops. So that's why this is very powerful. But also in most cases, you're just gonna be iterating by one. I just wanted to show you that that still is pretty powerful. So don't, or pay close attention to the detail there. All right, awesome, got our sandwich. One more thing, let's go ahead and we're gonna print out a nice pretty string. We're going to print out the ingredients are number zero bread, number one lettuce, number two tomato, number three turkey. Let's go ahead and do that. We kind of already did something like it. If we're going to create a string and the loop's going to help us build it, you want to print the string outside of the loop. What do I mean by that? As we already know, if I put a message in here, AGE equals, we're going to say ingredients like this, or are you gonna say, uh, yeah, whatever, yeah, ingredients. We're gonna say now message. What's gonna happen here is that we're still gonna get the same exact result, which is like, okay, what's going on here then? The thing is, is that as we iterate through every iteration, it's going to reset message. Our message resets every time because what happens in these brackets stays in these brackets. Every iteration is different. 
So if we wanted to write a pretty string like this one out there, we can't put our string inside of the for loop. It's just going to be rewritten. So therefore, we have to write our message on the outside, at least the variable to remember it. Remember, computers only remember things that you tell them to remember. If you put in the for loop, it's going to forget the second it leaves that for loop. I'm going to say message here. We're going to do an empty string. So now I'm going to reassign that message to say plus equals. And now I don't want to really write I, then plus, then my actual string and stuff like that. I want to write it in a much better format, literally a way better format, aka a string literal. And this is how it kind of looks. This is how we're going to write our actual um, string literal. As you can see, a string literal starts with these things called ticks, which you'll see in the top left of your keyboard. It's underneath the uh, uh, tilde. It's called a vinculum. It's underneath the tilde. So we start our things with that. The second thing that you'll note is that we have this dollar sign curly bracket. This denotes the start of a variable to plug that into your string. Uh, to plug that into your string. I know using a hashtag here was not the best and might be confusing. The hashtag is just part of the string. As you see up there in the pretty string, it says hashtag zero, hashtag one. It has nothing to do with coding. It's just there for formatting. Make it look pretty. So let's use a string literal, literal here to actually do what we want. We said we wanted to have the number. So I use dollar sign curly bracket. Then you see how it goes to black here instead of red like a typical string? Because it's telling it, okay, I know you're gonna put a variable in here. What variable would you like to put? Well, in my pretty string, I said I needed to put the number that the ingredient is on. So the number of my ingredient is the index. So I put I, the index. And then the next thing I need to do is actually put the ingredient name. So that's another variable. So here I put ingredients bracket I. And then I'm going to build that message like that. Now remember, we're going to put all of that and all those ingredients into one big string and then print it. So I don't want to print it in the for loop. I want to console log it down here. Finally, I need to add a little bit of a beginning thing. It says the ingredients are. So let's go ahead and do that. The ingredients are and then colon. All right, moment of truth. What are we going to do here? Ooh, that doesn't look too nice. Let's try a space. That seems better. R. Can you hide your file columns so the other stuff gets a little bigger? Absolutely. Thank you for calling that out. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean this? Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to be using any of that. So there we go. All right. Let's rerun that. Now I put a space. And there we go. We're all spaced out. So the ingredients are number zero bread, number one lettuce, number two tomato, and et cetera, and so forth. So that's what we have there. So this is how we use a string literal and a for loop to build us a nice pretty string. So this is the power of for loops. This is the power of string literals. So I hope everyone's liking that. All right, let's keep going here. Oh, and then of course a reminder, this is a string literal in case I haven't said it a million enough times. All right. So we're on to the next part, guys. Help me out here. I know, keep those eyes open. We're gonna bring back that for loop. How do we separate each part of the for loop? Semicolon. Semicolon. Semicolons. Very good. That's what I like to hear. How many times will this loop loop? 399? 399. It will loop 400, 400 times. Uh, okay. oh, wait, Just because our yes. number starts at zero, zero. doesn't yeah. mean it's not going to loop 400 times. Oh. Which leads me to my next question. What are the numbers it will start and end with? Start with zero, end with 399. Very good. It will loop to zero to 399. So we'll still loop 400 times. It's just not, it's just not our intuitive way of thinking 400 times. It starts with zero. Final question, the hardest one of the night. How many sandwiches do Americans eat a day? Is it 3 million, 300 million, 500 million, or 800 million? 800 million? 800 million. 300 million. Zero. <laughs> no sandwiches a day. Oh, I okay. heard 800 million. How dare you? We're not that bad. It's only 3 million. Oh, wow. 3 it's million 300 sandwiches million. a day. Good job. I don't John. think I can I eat that, that many in a day. Million. Hey, yeah. that's what it said. Random right fact of the day. All right, everybody. Let's keep going here. So we're just getting some bites in. Let's keep going. How would we create a variable called number of bites left? Because we're actually going to eat the sandwich now. How, what do we start with? Let's. 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 
Number Our eight. number of bites will definitely change because I'm eating oh. the sandwich. Yeah. Let number of bites left equal to five. Very good. Now help me out with this one. Print out, I'm taking a bite. If there's more than zero bites left in the sandwich, then decrease the number of bites. What do we need to start out with? What is this thing telling us we need to build? Four. 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 What are, are we going to be looping over thing any, anything here? Zero. Yes. Take a very close look at a keyword in our description here. Print out, I'm taking a bite if there are more than zero oh, bites left. If. if, 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 if. Remember to read our descriptions. It will give us that hint, if. So we're going to start writing an if statement. Can someone tell me what this if statement might look like, this conditional? If number of bytes zero. left if zero is, is greater than zero. It should be very good. It should greater be greater than, than zero. zero. Fantastic. Zero. And then we're going to close log. I'm taking a bite. And then it says one more thing to decrease the number of bytes because I just ate a bite. So there we go. Now, one last question is for you all. What is this called again? Conditional? Spatial conditional. Very good. It is a conditional. Awesome job. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what we just saw here, this conditional. So if we wanted to eat a sandwich, the entire sandwich, that only has five bites left, this is a small sandwich, or we just got a big mouth, we're going to need a bit of code. We'd have to eat another bite and another bite, and I didn't even have room for the other stuff. We'd have to keep doing this every single time. We don't like to repeat code. Just like counting with this if statement, we don't like to just duplicate this stuff. We want something faster and nicer and cleaner looking. So wouldn't it be a dream if we could just take this line of code or this section of code and turn it into something? Well, you're probably wondering, yes, I know you're gonna tell me something, Kyle. Just tell me it because it's probably another loop. And you're absolutely right, it is another loop. And this one is a while loop. While loops are different because for loops like to count while while loops like conditionals. They continue to loop while a conditional is true. So they'll keep looping as long as something is true. They'll never stop. That's what a while loop does. While loops conditionals, for loops counting. The two big different things there. So taking a look at this code that we don't want to continuously repeat, let's change this into an actual while loop. As we've already seen, the keyword we begin to create a while loop is while, then parentheses, and then we actually need to include our conditional. Our conditional is found up there in the if statement, but we don't want that if statement anymore, so we're gonna bring that conditional down, and then we're gonna close it off. Again, we see those curly brackets. What happens in those curly brackets stays in those curly brackets. So we're gonna put all that code then that we just had in that if statement into the while loop. We just transform that if statement into a while loop to save us that coding. So this is how we can do that. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick at a while loop in action. So we built our sandwich up there and now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say let num of bytes, did I say that? Yeah, number of bytes of uh, bytes left equals five delicious bytes. And then we start with our keyword while. Num of bytes, while num of bytes is less than, or sorry, greater than zero. <laughs> yeah, greater than zero. Wow, I'm forgetting my own stuff, right? Yeah, numbers <laughs> greater than zero, curly brackets, and we're gonna place that code inside of there. We said console log, we're gonna take a bite. I'm gonna take a bite. Woo. There we go, and then num of bytes equals num of bytes minus one. There we go, we're gonna decrease our number of bytes because once you take a bite, that's one less byte. So let's go and see how many bytes we get to take. It looks like we got five delicious bytes in there before it's all gone, and then we have our ingredients printed out because that's our console log down here. So, that is a while loop at work. We're gonna keep decreasing it, again, until number of bytes left is actually zero. So it's gonna keep decrementing until it reaches zero. Let's see it actually in action. Let's go ahead and console log num of bytes left. Let's just actually make sure that, Kyle, you're not lying to me. What we're gonna see here is I'm gonna console log, or I'm gonna comment out or gonna take a byte. Now we're gonna see it actually decreasing. Four, three, two, one, zero. 
Now, one thing I want to call out is that this is an example. This does not mean if you need to decrement or decrease numbers that you should go towards a while loop. That is not what this example is trying to explain. It's stating that if you have a conditional that a loop needs to keep going as long as it's true, then a while loop is what you need to explore. If you need to count, if you need to even decrement or like count backwards, typically for loops are the better tool to use. So I really, really want to make that a strong point. Amanda Lynn, so I'm seeing walk through lines five through nine. Five through nine is the for loop. So we can look at that in a second. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stay on while loops while we still have the time. And we come, I'll come back and go through that with you. So this is the while loop at work. Again, if you have a conditional, while loops is one, counting, for loops. There we go. But isn't the second section of your use for loop in conjunction with the while loop? Okay, let me, I was afraid that would be causing anything. That is not, so I just left that in there previously. They have nothing to do with each other. These are two separate examples. So we're gonna still run this. We still get that. I apologize for that. I should have explained that. So I just put the for loop in there. I just didn't comment it out for just, just because I was lazy, sorry. Let's just be transparent about it. There we go. We'll take a bite. They had nothing to do with each other. They work nothing in conjunction with each other. Two separate examples. So while loop still acts like this on its own. Awesome. Great question. All right. Finally, we have our for loop. We have our while loop. We've got that knowledge and those conditionals. Let's talk about having breaks. And unfortunately, it's not a good break that you want. It's all, it's more things we get to learn. Breaks are super powerful and cool. And what they do is let us leave our loops without the loops actually finishing on their own accord. What do I mean by that exactly? Let's stay here at this while loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a conditional in here. I'm going to say if num of bytes is equal, equal, equal to one, I'm going to console log this and say, I'm going to save the last byte. And then I'm going to break. So what's going to happen here, take a look at this, take a very, very close look. We have five, I'm going to take a bytes. Let's run this. Oh, crud. I'm going to have five. I'm going to put that down there. Remember, Kyle, it goes sequentially. Silly goose. There we go. Run that again. And now we have four, I'm going to take a bytes. And then I'm gonna have one, I'm gonna save that last byte. What happened here is that it went through here and it said, okay, is number of bytes equal to one? It's not, it's at five. And it comes down here, it's gonna say, I'm gonna take a byte, decrement it to four, and it's gonna loop back up here. And it's gonna keep doing that, three, two, one, come in here. And instead of printing out, I'm gonna take a byte, it says, I am gonna come into the sys statement and say, I'm gonna save the last byte and then break. Break means, GTFO out of this loop. Get the flip out of this loop. I mean, it will absolutely break. And we only use this within our loops at this moment. So breaks means get out of there. And it will immediately go down here to line 24 and move on to line 25. That's what break does. All right. That being said, we are finished. Look at that. Easy day, right? You're probably like, where's the extra information? Is this a trick? Nope, this is loops. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unmute and then feel free to, <laughs> Sky definitely is a good boy. This is a good boy gift. Um, <laughs> he's just on a sandwich, so cute. Anyway, uh, I will open up now for questions. Do, 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 do. One, 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 one. There we go. And feel free to post those questions. Katie, uh, before you go off my screen, did your question get answered or would you like to talk about something? And you can unmute yourself if you'd like. No, okay, so I wasn't talking about the difference in the examples for the for loop, the portion after I equals, I thought that was a conditional as well, that you had to have some sort of conditional in both a for loop and a while loop, otherwise you'd end up in your infinite. Oh, technically, yes, we have a conditional in here. But as you see, the conditional is partner with some other things. 
to make okay. it more of a counting technique. So what I meant by a conditional is that if you, like right now we're counting the number of bytes and we're monitoring that, that's a conditional we need to check. Okay. When it comes to this, this conditional is just to look at the length of an array. So it's not something that we're monitoring, we're just using it as like a, as a meter, basically. It's like, okay, where do I stop? It's not really a conditional we're trying to, like again, monitor, check on. Um, so yeah, this yeah. is what you'll typically see in the conditionals there, is using it for arrays. So yeah, sorry about that confusion there. I guess that terminology definitely can get distorted. Thanks. Cool. All right, wow, we got questions on questions. Let me go up here. Uh, okay, Ashton, does that answer your question? Feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, Melanie, so why would you want to break a loop if the break allows the loop to continue? It absolutely, or so it does not allow the loop to continue. Break means it's getting out of that loop. Break means it will come down here to line 25 the second it sees that. We only broke when a condition is true. So break is the exact opposite of letting it to continue. If it sees a breaking point, it gets out of that loop immediately. So did you want to, uh, did that answer your question or did you want me to explain further on, on some portion? So I was under the impression, I guess, that a while loop is um, like something that can just keep continuing on and on and on. And I, I don't understand putting a, a break in it if it's a, a continuous thing. Isn't so, that the point of a while loop? A while loop has the power to be continuous, but for, to let a loop just run on forever is not only dangerous, but can break your code and also your machine. That's going to cause an error called a stack overflow error or a variety of other ones. The while loop has that power. What do I mean by that? If I set this to true here, and I did not, oh, this is going to be bad, and I did not have this break in here, what's going to happen is that I am going to get an infinite loop here where my code will never stop. This is extremely dangerous. We do not want that. Please, OK, thank gosh. Sometimes my computer crashes with that. Anyway. So that's why we want to put breaks in here. Say we want to loop infinitely until a condition is met, then we can include the break in there. So now instead of infinitely looping, we can just stop right there. So to answer your question. So like if you're setting it up and you're not sure when the end would be, the break allows you to find it? In a way, if you know how to set up your break where you can wrap it in a conditional that you, you know what to do, then yeah, if you want to say, keep looping until my dog's name changes to Stark for whatever reason, then you can put a break in there. Usually, yeah, so I mean, yeah, you can set it up to be that way. I would not recommend uh, really ever putting a true in here. That's like putting a fork in a toaster. You don't wanna do that. So definitely, definitely make sure you're putting conditionals up here to keep being checked. So the while loop does have a stopping point. Again, yeah, to everybody, do not put true in here. This was for an example. Please don't, for your computer's sake and for mine. All right. Um, Melanie, like does that kind of help someone's machine? <laughs> what was that, Corey? I said that sounds like a nice way to sabotage someone's machine. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Through. There you go. Your your first hacking. <laughs> uh, uh, Melanie, does that help? Yeah, that made sense. Okay. All right, let me keep going down these lists of questions, everybody. We have a few more minutes. Da, 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 da. Can you show the last bit of code again? Um, I, I've, and also, I've never told anybody, like told you guys this, I am terrible at names, so I do apologize. So if I just absolutely butcher your name. If I butcher your name, you can butcher mine. Um, but uh, Mr. Ronald, uh, I'm going to say Graham? Graham? Graham. Graham. Okay. I say Graham. Uh, you want to see the last bit of code, which is, I just want to make sure that was shown. Yeah, you should have already. Thanks for that, though. Just want to make sure. Cool. Okay, thanks. Um, maybe not it. A little confused. Why does it print all five times? 
Um, that we're was gonna before do... the break, also, by the way, just just to clarify, okay. before that was in there. We got that break. I'm gonna comment it out though. Um, okay, so what it was is that, so it's gonna start on five and it's gonna go to zero. So technically, we're gonna have, oh, I want to say six iterations. So let me let me see. Yeah, so it's gonna, let's see. Okay, so it comes in here five greater than. Yeah, because no, sorry, we're gonna yeah. have five iterations. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Okay, yeah, I had to do that math in my head. Like, we're doing it right, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so you're gonna see it five times. Cool. Keep going. Good. We're on a roll here. Let's see if we can get through all of them. Uh, can we go over when and why to use length in your example, uh, Jade? Jade, we were talking about that above. You're gonna use length typically in a for loop, and we're gonna use that length because we're counting or moving through a, an array. Remember, arrays have indexes. This is our index right here in that square bracket. We use the length because we don't know if our ingredients are going to expand or shrink. Length will tell us exactly the size of our array. So it tells us exactly the numbers we need to count, zero to whatever the length is. Therefore, that's why we use it, because we are counting through ingredients and we need their length. So if you're gonna go through an array, if you're gonna try to for loop through an array or console log it or do something, you're typically gonna use the length property of that specific array. And feel free to unmute yourself as well if you have any additional questions with that. Because we did another example, it was another for loop, but you didn't use um, length at first. And then in this example, you use length. So is it just specific to an array compared to a string? Or so this is the <laughs> other example I did. Is yes. this what it looked like? Mm -hmm. So this is a, just a solid number. Mm -hmm. Now, I did this because up here, we know that we have four items. My question to you is, what if we add onions? You'd have to come into your code, and you'd have to put five then. Mm -hmm. If you did another thing, you'd have to put six. We don't have to keep coming in here and rewriting this. We just want yeah. to know what is the size of ingredients right then and there and loop that. So instead of putting the solid number four, I put a variable, which is ingredients dot length, which is the mm -hmm. property. So it will give us four, but if I do this, well, then it will do five now. Gotcha. So what it does, it's more dynamic. I don't like using like the word dynamic, but it is dynamic. So it will shrink and grow depending on how big our, or small our array gets. So instead of having to redo your, your, do your code, you just get that property for you. So it's better just to use length because you never know if another ingredient will be added. Exactly right. Okay. So it's definitely more safe to do that. Cool. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Thank you. For sure. All right, guys, we got two more minutes here. Let me see if I can get any more. Uh, thank you, Richard. I did, I did risk it all. Don't put forks in toasters. Infinite loops are terrifying. Yes, they are. Uh, how do we, how do we use reserve? Re how do we do reverse? Oh, how do we do reverse? Um, uh, you know what? Let's do that. That'll be a nice little final thing. What if we wanted to post all of our ingredients backwards? Now that's a fun one. Let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to revert this here to console log dot ingredients i i'm going to comment out the stuff below here oh fine that's cool thanks code let me out here Doo -doo -doo. And this will be our last example of the night everybody all right so we have our reverse reverse means we need to start from the end and work our way to the beginning who can tell me in the array we're looking at here what number do we start with Jade, what number should we start with here? Or what property? I'm sorry, I was definitely typing in the question. Oh, no, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> we, uh, so what property would we start with if we wanted to count from the end of the array? And if anybody else knows it, feel free to throw it out too. See this? <laughs> it would be ingredients.length. Sorry, I'm not trying to pick on you. We just no, pick on me because like, oh, I need to so know funny. this. Trust me, you can pick on me. Ingredients dot length. Okay. 
But ingredients on length is going to give us in this scenario, because I put onions here, it's going to give us five. Minus but there's no one. fifth minus index. One. So we do minus one. Very good. Finally, we need to count till zero. So I need to say, well, i is greater than or equal to zero. Keep counting. And we don't want to increment anymore. We need to decrement. Here, we run this, and we will now get all of our ingredients backwards. This is how we reverse going through an array. All right, I'll leave it open here for any questions about this particular example or any previous. Points. I got a question for for the ingredients dot length. We can use plus one. How do we take out minus one? If I did so, plus one here. Yeah. That works. So if I did plus one, what's going to happen is that I'm going to start two indexes too far away. So I'm going to get two undefined here. We, at this point, would be starting at seven and counting down to zero. We have zero, one, two, three, four. We don't have a seventh, a sixth, or a fifth index. So that's why we don't want to start. That's why we don't want to do a plus one. Because we need to start at four. So we do the length minus one. When we run this again, the undefines go away. All right, thank you. Absolutely. All right, everyone. That is all we wrote today. So thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. And let's unleash you all. Unfortunately, I have to say goodbye, but enjoy everyone your, uh, I'm trying to find my screen. Where are you all at? There we are. Come back, there we go. See all your pretty faces before we go. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Hopefully, you did like uh, loops today. Hopefully, we are friends with loops, and we're going to use them in the studio. Feel free to come back here and join me for the end of the studio. Uh, we'll go over all this stuff at 8 p.m. Other than that, have a great Memorial Day. If I don't see you, a great Memorial weekend. Barbecue, get out, enjoy the air. Hopefully, the weather's nice. Other than that, I'll see everyone back here next Thursday. Thanks, Kyle.